I'm Dan Carney. This is the Speed Skating Video Podcast. Let's go. So today we've got another accomplished, um, successful inline skater, Mr. Tanner Worley. Um, only been on the ice for a short time. And back in January at Olympic trials, he finished in the top 10 in the 500, the 1,000, and even the 1,500 for a sprinter, which is fantastic. So all the way from Utah, let's bring in Tanner Worley right now. Tanner, how are you feeling? <laughs> good, good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's really stunning to see you wearing a Bont t-shirt for this interview. Of course, man. This uh, <laughs> company has done so much for me, so it's only right that I, you know, get back while I can. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's let's start at the beginning. I, I, I always find it interesting when I meet and get a chance to talk to somebody that's gone really far in a sport you know how did you find the sport so you, you grew up in um, just outside of Wichita Kansas right so how, how did you find wheels yeah so I actually grew up in Wichita Kansas it was uh my friends back at home were like man why do they keep seeing Derby Kansas yeah even though I went to high school and middle school in Derby um, I still lived in Wichita um, how I ended up getting up in, into speed skating was uh my friend named Braxton, we always went to play basketball together, and then we got on a team playing bitty basketball. Bitty basketball was really big before um, the YMCA came in, so it was just like, you know, crafting young kids into being great basketball players and even better young men. So we did that, and usually we had a banquet at the end of the year, and um, one year we ended up not having it, and uh, the rink that we used to go to ended up shutting down. So they were like, hey, man, let's uh, go over to – uh, roller city and let's try some skating I was like, all right you know so we went out there and they were doing some races and i was like hey you know kids 12 and under come out and try it so went out there was on some quads end up winning the race and the guy that was in the dj booth happened to be the coach joe carter who's still one of my uh, coaches to this day and uh, he's like yeah you should come try it out we have beginner speed every saturday at 10 o'clock i'm like well you know i play basketball but i definitely will ask my mom my mom didn't want to do it at first you know Strictly were basketball players and football players. Mainly on my side of the family was all basketball players. And I was like, okay, you know, well, I'm like, I'm liking this actually. So I kept going back to session, kept doing little session races. And then um, I wanted to get some skates. My dad ended up buying me some quads, but he wouldn't buy me any inline. So I started selling like clothes that I couldn't fit, shoes that I didn't wear to kids on my block. And then uh, ended up coming up with a hundred bucks. And Joe was like, hey, here's the deal. Um, I'll sell you these skates for a hundred bucks. You use them. Once you get done with them, I'll give you your hundred bucks back and we'll pass them down on to the next kid. And just took off from there. A year after that, I finally got my first sponsor. And then maybe just a little bit after that, uh, Joe offered me and my mom to go to France. And I was like, oh, I don't know if she's going to want to fly overseas. You know, you know how it is flying overseas for the first time. And, you know, she saw that I was uh, dedicated to doing this. So we split basketball and skating half and half. So I'll go first half of the night skating second half of the night basketball practice and then from there it just took off wow that's <laughs> so joe saw something in you immediately clearly yeah it was <laughs> luck of the draw honestly you know i was out there and he's like hey man come up here you know they give you like a free airhead and drink or whatever it is and uh it's like yeah you should really come and try this like i think you have the natural ability to do it and i was like you know what shoot i'd like to try something different and uh, like I said, my mom at first, you know, she wanted me to go to college for basketball. But I just, my my, my heart was in skating, but I still li loved basketball, but I really wanted to skate. It was just something different. And you didn't hear a lot of people doing it. And it was just unique. It was something different. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. try this and pursue it. So another question that I, I like to ask people that, you know, that have really uh, accomplished a lot in sports. When did you know that you kind of looked around and said i'm really good at this like how how quickly did you kind of was it obvious to you well 2009 was my first year um i went to nationals i skated novice that year i got third and then i was just hungry after that i felt like i i saw the world-class skater skaters and i saw how they were treated i saw the sponsorships you know i was just like man i want that i want more than that so i was like you know from then on i was just i was 
dedicated to doing whatever it took to be the best. 2010, um, I felt was like a good year for me. There was a lot of competitors from the East and West Coast that, you know, they didn't like a new guy coming in and winning. You know, I took the beat down for a little bit, and I was glad that I took that beat down because it's for me into the person that I am today. I mean, if you can't accept defeats the same way you accept wins, and you'll never be successful. So uh, I took the beat, and, you know, it's just what it is. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to have to figure out some way to be good at this if I want to be great. And it was just the mentality, changing my mentality, going to practice, being hungry every time I stepped on the floor, being at the rink, not only for practice but for session. You know, I just put in the extra work just to make sure that I was giving in my all before I knew, like, if this was something that I wanted to do. But I felt like right off the rip after seeing it in 2009, I knew I was wanting to do this. And then 2010 came around, and um, we went to outdoor nationals. And, you know, all those kids that didn't like me back then, I went there. And by 2010, that year after, I was beating them all. So I was like, you know, I just put in the work, and you'll get the results. Oh, that's awesome. So when you started, it was mostly indoor, right? So when you started doing outdoor stuff, was was that a big change? Uh, I feel like I grasped on it uh, pretty fast just from watching videos. Uh, I was at home, man. I wasn't watching Disney Channel. I was watching skating videos, you know. So I, I really wanted it. So I, you know, I dialed in on certain people that I looked up to at the time. Uh, Michael Cheeks, um, Joey, for sure. Joey, I, I try to mimic his technique. And there's a few other guys that I, you know, looked up to. But I would say mainly those two guys that were winning at the time. And I was like, you know, I really want to put myself in those shoes one day and I'm going to do whatever it takes. So I feel like studying the videos is what really helped me. And then Joe, um, breaking down the double push, um, step by step and just really working on it one-on-one. -on -one. I was really blessed to have, um, Joe, uh, not a lot of people get that one-on-one -on -one work, but it didn't matter what time it was. It could be five in the morning, four in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, Joe was going to be there right by my side and we were going to do whatever it took to be the best. And, um, you know, I credit him a lot for my career, even to this day, still on this ice, you know, he's the one that formed the base for me to even excel from what I started at to what I am now. So big shout out to Joe Carter for everything yeah. he's done for me. Yeah, I, I actually, um, when I was doing research, getting ready for, for my big uh, time spent with Tanner, I, I did find an article from... 2015, maybe, uh, and Joe was, was talking about how he felt you had the best uh, skating technique in the country. Um, that's, uh, that's some high praise. There's, there's a lot of fantastic inline skaters out there, so coming from him, I'm sure that makes you feel good. Of um, course. Yeah. The, the other thing that I, I kind of noticed is, you know, some of, the, some of the guys that have done inline and then eventually went long track, you know, had some time on short track, but it, is there even short track skating in Wichita? Uh, so Joe used to be the coach back in the day before I even started. And um, yeah, he was the coach there. And then it just ended up, I don't know what ended up happening between mm -hmm. them and the rink or whatever. It got shut down, but it was not an option when I came in. I okay. tried short track one time in Wichita before, and it was just like an open practice, went there. There really wasn't a coach. And I was just like, you know what? You got to have a coach or you have to have somebody that's been a student of the game to even teach you this. So I was just there and I tried it one time, was freezing my butt off. And I was like, OK, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have to wait and see, you know, when my time comes, I'll just stick to the inlines until then. Well, well, speaking of short track, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to abuse myself for the video quality here. But I want to show you a little clip uh, from an indoor race that, that you participated in. Um, and before I cue this up, um, yeah, I watch this indoor stuff on the parquet floor, and you guys are absolutely flying. But aside from the fact that it just looks insane to me, it looks a lot like short track to me. Yeah. So it's curious to me that, that not more of the inline guys from indoor go to short track. It seems like most of you guys all want to go long track, but let's just cue this up for fun. Do you remember this one? Oh yeah, this is a throwback. This is my first year pro. Yep, first year pro. Yeah, oh. guys jumping over each other, flying into the wall. Yeah, that so, was me falling down right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I heard the announcer say that. Yeah, poor announcer. He was trying to keep track of who was in front and what was happening and who was going down, and he's correcting himself because 
everything's happened way too fast. So for sure, really. Yeah. Cool. But uh, yeah, clearly you didn't. You know, you didn't really have a lot of access to that. But the other thing that from that article that that really caught my attention is I think it was about 2015 or so, you were already talking about, hey, I want to transition to ice. I want to go to the Olympics. Because there's, as much as you lobbied and tried, there's no Olympic inlining on the summer side. So I think that's interesting that you had that um, vision back then and you were thinking about it. But then, you know, eventually you made your way to long track, but it seemed like a lot of things happened I guess, on your way to getting there. Can you just kind of take us through that a little bit? Yeah, so back in 2015, um, I really wanted to do it just because I saw Joey do it. I seen he uh, transferred and uh, was pretty successful. And I was just like, you know, like I want to take the next step. My, my dream is, or my ultimate goal is to be an Olympian, but not just an Olympian. I want to be a, a gold medalist at the Olympics. So, um, yeah, my mentality back then was just like, I'm going to do this inlining as long as I can try to reach all my goals and then eventually, um, transfer over to long track. Well, it wasn't just transfer over to ice, to be honest. It wasn't a long track or short track back in 2015. Um, and then 2018, um, it, it's crazy cause I almost missed the opportunity cause I wasn't checking my emails, but, uh, Jay Ingram hit me up and he was like, Hey man, have you seen the email from uh, the people at us speed skating on ice? Like, oh, no, like I've been pretty busy, like working now. We just got back from Worlds and, you know, I'll go back into normal life for a little bit before I get back to training. And he's like, yeah, well, you should really look at your emails because um, they're offering a few of you guys to go out, um, go out to Utah and they're going to pay for everything just so you guys can come and try short track and long track. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm I'm on it. (laughs) So ended up checking the email and responded to him. And luckily it was like the day of, it was like the deadline. So he hit me up at the right time, and uh, from there, I came out. I think it was maybe like a, a two or three weeks later. I came out to Utah, and um, we really didn't experience much other than being at the Oval. And I mean, they sold us good. I was ready to move immediately after, like a month after, if I could. Went back home, and uh, my brother ended up getting in a motorcycle accident, so that delayed a lot of stuff. I just felt like I couldn't leave um, him in those conditions. Um, until I knew he was stable, you know, everything was going to be all right. So that ended up happening. Um, and then it was probably like two days before I was going to plan on, I uh, planned on moving. He got in the wreck. So that slowed some stuff down. And then I finally got here in January of 2020 and I skated 30 days roughly and then COVID hit. And that was an experience in itself. Those first 30 days, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just out here having a great time, you know, adjusting to living by myself, um, trying a new sport, being in a town that I've only been in one time, trying to make new friends outside of skating, you know, all those things that come um, in when you're moving into a new state or moving to a new sport or trying to do some new things. So yeah, COVID hit and um, I didn't know what was gonna end up happening. I was just like, well, you know, they end up canceling canceling the Calgary uh, race. I was really excited to do in that doubt. It was all determined, like me and Mitch had sat down Cause I was like, okay, you know, do I go to this Calgary brace or do I just wait? You know, I'm just starting. And he's like, well, you know, um, I think I did like a 114 and a thousand at the end of the season or something like that. that was my first thousand. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you might as well go and see how it how it is or you know try it out. And I was like, wow, you know, I'm excited to go and try it. And boom, they canceled it. And then and they canceled the rest of our season on uh, ice because of COVID. And then we got back to training in may of 2020 and then everything was going well um i was adjusting um to the training because i knew my body on inlines i knew what my threshold was i knew how hard i needed to go um or how light i needed to go that day like i just knew everything and adjusting to the ice training it, it, it was a big change for me because i wanted to come out here and i knew i was you know overworking myself but i didn't want to be like a baby or complaining it's like all right you know maybe this is just what you go through it's new training it's a new sport i don't know how hard you have to go or about this base building or anything like that so you know i'm training i'm training i'm training i'm going hard i'm doing whatever it takes because you know i want to be the best at this as soon as possible i feel like that's everybody's mentality you know they want to get great as, as quick as they can so i'm training i'm training i'm training um 
I'm doing a, a bike ride, first time riding up a mountain. I live where it's super flat. I mean, we have no mountains, no hills, no nothing. It's Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, first bike ride was like 70 some miles, 80 miles, something like that. But it was like a lot of climbing. It was big cottonwood. So this, this mountain's 15 miles to the top from the bottom of it to the very top of it. And, you know, I'm riding, not knowing anything, you know, just out here on my stroll. My chain falls off a couple of times, so I lose the group. <laughs> Now I'm riding by myself and I'm like, okay, I think I see the top. I look over. That's not the top. They didn't tell me that it was 15 miles to the top. So I'm riding. I get back. Um, I get to the top and I thought we were finished. I had like five minutes break. And then there was another climb. Another climb that we had to do is called Guardsman. And I guess Guardsman here riding the bike wise is the hardest mountain that they end up climbing. It's just straight up. You probably average like four or five miles an hour. You're like swerving from side yeah. to side, trying to keep the bike going. So I finally get home, get off the bike, go home. I'm throwing up blood. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I end up showing up to practice the next day and um, told the coaches what ended up going on. He's like, oh, you know, it's probably just like altitude sickness, altitude poisoning. You've never been up that high riding. So I'm like, all right, you know, no problem. A week goes by. That Friday, we do some killer inlines and some killer dry land. And I knew I wasn't feeling great coming that July 4th that morning. The, that next Saturday, we rode. That was July 4th, and my lady was coming into town, so we get the ride going. I'm feeling all right. We get back, and the back of my neck is just done for. Um, I get home. I ate like a chicken sandwich, drank a chocolate milk immediately after. And mind you, before the races, I'm hydrating. I'm doing everything that you're supposed to do to make sure that you're going to be able to survive on this six- to eight-hour ride, however long it is, you know. Make sure I have the right stuff. And I get home. I ate and then I'm taking a shower. I can't even stand up in the shower. I'm starting to throw up, throwing up everything that I had. And then for, I thoroughly threw up like four times. And then after that, another six times after that was just straight blood and dry heaving. I oh. couldn't even pick my, uh, my lady up. Um, she ends up getting a ride to the house and I end up laying down for like two hours and I wake up and I'm throwing up again and I should go to the emergency room. I call my mom. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, nothing's staying down. Now I'm just throwing up blood. I'm dry heaving like I'm hurting. She's like, yeah, just go to the doctor or go to the emergency room. Go to the emergency room. Nine and a half bags of IV fluid. And uh, they kept me overnight. The doctor comes in the next morning. And he's like, hey, man, like, uh, do you have any black holes? I don't know what black holes are, so probably not. And uh, they were supposed to prep me for a scoping. And they didn't end up doing the scoping. So I took like three, four days off and then went back to skating again and the same thing happened. I just started throwing up blood after going hard. So I met with the doctor down here and it was like a three month wait to get in to get a scoping. And mind you now it's like beginning of August, ice is about to go in. And I'm like, I can't wait any longer. So I go home and um, I was back and forth home all of August, September, and October, just trying to figure out what's going on. And um, I finally got in to get a scoping in at the beginning of September, I want to say. And they found black holes, stomach bleeding, inflammation, ripping, all this stuff. And um, they were like, yeah, like you have to chill out. And then um, I was relaxing and I didn't really get to skate too much of the 2020, 2021 season. You know, I was there, but I wasn't there. If you get what I'm saying, like yeah. I was there present, but physically and mentally, it was just like I was fighting myself the whole time because, you know, I make a couple steps feel like I'm doing good and then I get shot back down to square one with my health and then finally I just like okay February of 2021 I was like okay I'm just gonna ch stop see what I'm doing go to the doctor so I just met with doctors for February and March and then finally I, they figure out what was going on um, from another scoping ultrasound and stuff like that so they gave me this medicine I just take the medicine full-time now until you know my skating career is over and I mean, that's what brought me back to life. So 2021, 2022 season was my first, uh, was my first full season of uh, actually having like a full summer trading, building the base and then being able to skate the whole season. And it was a blessing, man. Like it was so nice to see um, the hard work that I really wanted to do. I wanted to go as hard as I could and finally paid off. You know, I was just happy with the results and I'm excited to see what this season holds for me. So at this point, I mean, you didn't have a surgery. There was no, hey, now you're fixed. You're just, you're taking a, a certain medicine and that's carrying the day for you? Yeah, I take, uh, it's four times a day. It's uh, called famotidine. And then another one is called supaclate. Don't mark me on that. I might be a little wrong, but something like that. Mm. 
And it's uh, one is like an acid reflex, and then the other one is just to make sure the stomach is doing well, like the liner and all that crap that was all messed up. Wow. But yeah, it's just like I couldn't, I could go hard to a certain point before it was like my stomach started to feel like it was sucking in at the bottom and the top was pushing out. It was, it was horrible. I wouldn't play, uh, put that on my worst enemy. It was the worst time yeah. of my life just because, you know, I'm here in a new place. I'm trying to adjust. I'm, I'm going as hard as I can and I'm not getting the results I want because of my health. So, um, so now I that they sat down, you're, you're, you're living with, you know, this adjustment with taking a medicine every day i'm sure there were times where you just felt nervous and like oh you know i'm gonna go hard is this gonna be a problem i mean where are you at mentally now do you feel like you can just go yeah i feel like i can go as hard as i want now um back then it was i never experienced any like depression or anxiety or anything like that because it just sucked like i was living with my two friends and they were able to go to practice and do all this and Cray, which is the doctor here, was like, yeah, man, like you can't skate ISU with these type of blood levels because it's just you won't pass a drug test. It's just what mm-hmm. it is. Like your blood is so high or so low, or whatever it was at the time, um, that I couldn't do anything. And it was just like, thing. I was, I was, I was miserable. Like I was sitting at home doing nothing. I wasn't working or anything. And it was just, it was the worst time of my life. But yeah. um, I feel like if you know, it helped me. It helped me uh, to understand and not take anything for granted. Because, mm. like I said, at that time, it was just like, dang, like, you're not going to be able to do this. I really thought, like, my career was going to be over just because I wasn't listening to my body. I was just going as hard as I could, not giving a care in the world because I was just excited to be here and wanted to showcase my, my work ethic just so they knew that, you know, every time I'm showing up to practice, I'm going to go up 120%. So you're a good teammate, aren't you? Yeah, and I, I'm big on that. I just feel like, you know... Um, you know, if a teammate's having a bad day, if I'm having a good day, even if I'm not having a good day, I try to make sure that, you know, I'm pumping up everybody else because, you know, we all have bad days. We all have great days. We all have okay days. Yeah. And it's up to, I feel like it's up to that, not up to that next person, but if you're, you know, if you're getting encouragement from somebody else that's not having a good day, or even if they are having a good day, just let me you know, hey, man, we're going to get through this. Tomorrow's going to be great, you know? Yeah. So that's the type of mentality I have for my teammates, just knowing that, you know, I'm going to be here for you no matter what. That's great. You you mentioned Mitch before, and and you are skating for the fast team in in Utah, which most people know as the the developmental team out there. Um, you and I talked before, and and uh, I'm sure they'll be disappointed to know that neither of us know what fast stands for. We could <laughs> yeah. probably sit here for a while and guess, but um, that team has had a lot of international flavor. It's had a lot of people come and go. Uh, the team was quite large last year, and it's it's basically Mitch uh, Whitmore and, and little Stephen Hartman, who I swear to God he grows an inch every year. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's but, a giant. <laughs> I mean that's that's a lot of that's a lot of skaters for uh, a couple of guys. So, but this year more like twenty or so. Yeah, twenty twenty five. Okay, right around that's, there. That's Probably still a lot. Thirty. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of skaters, but. Uh, um, they take it on well so big shout out to both of them for what they do for all these skaters because i know it can be stressful but they're very great at uh, keeping their composure and you know doing the best that they can to get feedback to each skater uh, day in and day out so yeah you know, we appreciate them yeah that's cool um some i don't know why i i felt that you were going to be a good teammate but you and i didn't spend a lot of time together when i was out in salt lake last year but you seem like a guy that uh that that is is going to be there for everybody regardless of what kind of day you're having and i think that's a real a real testament to somebody is you know anybody can be a great teammate when they just skated a pr um but when you're having a bad day but you see somebody having a worse day and you spend the time to pick them up you know i want you on my team if if that's who you are Um, i appreciate that yeah, so let's let's do something different. So I'm going to make you the coach now, and, okay. <laughs> and the student is you. So I took a little bit of video. This is from early last season, and I want you to – I'll play these clips for you, and I want you to mm-hmm. tell me what you see, and from there, you know, let's talk about what you're going to do this year. So – Let's start with a clip here. This is uh, all from the safe, same 500 here. So okay. here we go. Okay. 
So that's right off the line. So I'm sure you guys do plenty of video work and, and obviously as a sprinter, the opening hundred is a big deal and getting off the line is a big deal. So I, I think, you know, when I, I look at what you did in inlines and when I look at what you're doing in, in ice, I would say your biggest asset probably is leg speed, right? You're a guy that can pick it up and put it down in a hurry. So when you look at yourself coming off the line, tell me what you see. Yeah, so back then, like during that time, I was fighting of not picking up my back foot first before picking up the front. It's just like a big adjustment because coming from inlines, we start sideways. The first initial reaction is from the back foot over the front. So I was fighting that for the longest. And um, coming off the line, like inlines, it's like a pop-up. And on ice, it should be like a drive out. Yeah. So um, I've been really working on that a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, when I got back from Olympic trials last year, or excuse me, this year, um, I, I got new skates and was just trying to transition. And I felt like it kind of took me back to square root one. Um, but starting, because it's, it's a big transition when you transfer from skates. Like, I didn't understand that, like, a new blade, a new boot, like, it's night and day difference. And yeah. it's a big adjustment, but... Um, the biggest adjustment that I would say that I'm trying to work on this year, and I've been working a lot on it on the hockey skates, is coming off the line already ready to skate and not run. Yeah. Like uh, it's all about foot speed on inlines because you're running on top of the pavement. You know, on ice you're trying to put as much pressure down into the ice and try to get that bounce back. So just uh, trying to adjust of not running so much and trying to still have the leg speed but more so power. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, so here's probably about 50 meters in, and this is where you should be into your low, fast, powerful skating. So let's cue this one up for you quick. So yeah, what do you there's see there? still so much more that uh, to get more <laughs> into the skates. It's like I'm sitting so high at that time, but I was just out there enjoying it, just happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, it's a it's a big adjustment, like a technical wise. Like man, I, I spent so much time on inlines trying to hone down down on that technique and dial it in to perfection, and uh, I think I've done a really good job with that uh, on inlines. And now I'm just trying to apply that same mentality here on ice. But it's yeah. like a it's a fight day in and day out because some days you feel great on the ice and some days you're just like man I feel like a bobo again. Yeah, so it's was... just uh, <laughs> getting that that time on the ice and uh, to bet you know to give me that more that confidence I should say to know that I have put in the training and the hour the time all that stuff to be able to know that the technique is going to be good. Well, let's pick up this corner here because I think this is an area where you shine. Tell me what you think. For sure, there's still so much more. Like, I still want to be lower. Um, I want to get that chest down more um, into the skates and, you know, really trying to crunch more on the right just so I get more off of it. I still feel like the feet are a little too fast. Um, but like I said, towards the end of the year last year, that was something that I'm working on. And this year is really – we have enough time now. You know, it's the first year of the quad. So, yeah, uh, I really want to take this year – I want to be fast, of course, but I really want to take this year to dial in the technique um, just so that – I'm confident when it comes into later years, you know, the third year, the fourth year of the quad that, hey, you know, I've done everything in those first couple of years, technical wise. Now, let's get the, 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 the physical base back into it and let's see where we can take off from there. So that was, you know, that was three clips really all from the same race back in October. So I took this kind of low quality clip, but this is, I think this is your thousand opener from Olympic trials. Um, tell me if you see anything different here, or if it's kind of the same guy. Yeah. So during that time, um, I had already adjust from the bobbing. I don't know if you've seen it in the 500, but like, um, you know, like I said, on inlines, it's a lot about just, ah, 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 you know, like get, getting to the place or getting to that spot as quick as possible. As on long ice, you can slow that down and still get there just as fast or even quicker if you're using power. There, I feel like um, I had really finally, like, made a big adjustment to 
my cornering, making it where I'm coming out of the corner as I enter. Like, so if I'm entering low, I'm still coming out low and not the chest is not getting high as I'm on end lines from the middle of the apex to the end of the corner. You know, you're just trying to get there. You're raising up, you know, you're doing everything because it's just about foot speed. Yeah. Well, and you know, another gigantic difference, it's, you know, the track is tiny and you're surrounded by guys that are trying to beat you. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. It's a totally, sure. a totally different situation. So here, here's another question for you. Um, I, I know the answer to this for me, but I want to hear from you. So okay. Olympic trials, 500, you finish seventh, a uh, thousand, you finish ninth and 1500, you finish 10th. Which race were you most impressed with? Uh, the 15 <laughs> yeah. for sure yeah the 15 for sure <laughs> totally um, agree yeah. I, I had no expectations just going in there uh, i just wanted to skate good i knew what um i wanted to do i didn't know like a time but i just knew how i wanted to skate the race um usually like i'm blasting off the opener 23 24 opener you know that's what the top guys are opening and then yeah. i'm finishing the race one 152 151 area you know so um, I think I opened up there like 24-0 or 23-9, but it was an effortless 23-0 or 23-9. Yeah. Um, I really use the start as uh, like just a building base. Like I'm usually over there trying to blast off the line fast feet. It was slower feet, just more powerful, got off the line, was feeling good. Came around one lap to go or with two laps to go, was still feeling good. Um, didn't see my partner, just kept going and it was just felt like I was just ripping it and I just felt like the race came to be. It wasn't like I had like I had uh, forced anything. I just felt like everything was coming in as it should have, and um, the time I was just amazed at. Like 150 was good because a year before I did 157, and I was like, yeah, this race I'll never be good in. And um, we even got that down to almost uh, 147 at the end of the season. So yeah, um, I'm excited to see where this season goes. Yeah, that's you know you're you're. You get under 150, then it's like okay, we we can start paying attention to this guy. He's not just a just a blazing sprinter. Um, he might right, have right. more to offer. Um, I mean, when I look at your ice technique and I look at the speeds you're putting up, I see tremendous potential. Um, I see a guy that's that. got all kinds of room to make technical improvements. But you know, I th I think you have. Um, an incredible work ethic and you're driven um, and you've got a lot of natural ability clearly uh, so it's I, I think it's going to be exciting so you, you mentioned the term quad and you know maybe not everybody understands that but a, a quad of course is a four-year block of training leading up to the next Olympic Games so when you look at the beginning of this quad here with this upcoming season provided you don't have more injury episodes or anything else you know what are the goals? What are you trying to do this season? Is there something specific or is it just, Hey, I got to become a better skater. Yeah. I mean, one of my goals is to really, uh, I would love to make the, the world cup team this year. Um, I mean, if give or take, if that doesn't happen, I won't be bumped, but, um, that's like one of the main goals. Um, I plan on, you know, I want to go under 108 in the thousand, 35 0 34 in the 500 and then the 15 is just up in there i would love to go you know 145 146 if possible those are the goal times but the ultimate goal is to um yeah become a better skater um you know get my name out there you know for years to come and just you know just know that i'm a force to be reckoned with when it comes to this stuff because i'm really hungry for it you know i'm not out here sacrificing all this for nothing so, um, yeah, just knowing that I'm, I'm ready in all aspects and I'll do whatever it takes to become an Olympic gold medalist. Well, uh, uh, a wise skater once told me that it takes five years on ice before you become an acceptable skater. Um, I feel like I'm living proof of that. Um, it's, I find this sport to just be maddening because it's a, it's a constant chase, um, for technique and technical gains sure. and and you know you think you did something good and then you see video and it's like oh you know who is that guy um mm -hmm. i also think it's a sport that i was talking uh the other day with arthur vash about how this sport can be so neurotic 
you know, one day it's just like everything's effortless and I'm so great at this and I can't believe I, you know, didn't decide to do this sooner and then you lose right. your technique for one corner and it's like, why did I start speed skating? So, <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that. I mean, it, we talked about this before. Like I said, man, like you could, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> There's those days, man, that you're just feeling silky smooth. Like, man. If I keep yeah. it going like this, I don't know. The sky is the limit. Then those little days, you're just like, wow, bro, this feels horrible. What am I doing? <laughs> Why am I here today? But if you get through those days, uh, it makes those easy days or the days that it feels effortless just even greater. Yeah. But that's where, you know, that's where I think good teammates and good coaching help, you know, especially with guys like, like Mitch and Steven, you know, they've been there, they've done stuff they can help you shave off the highs and lows and keep you focused and just sure. stick with your, you know, your incredible work ethic and just keep, you know, keep grinding. Cause at times this, this is a thankless sport. <laughs> it can be lonely and it can be painful, but, sure. um, last question. So you were a pretty good basketball player. Um, actually a really good basketball player in high school. And, and clearly you were, um, you know, managing two sports and, and, you know, being there for your family and school and everything else. But I, I'm going to ask you this question. Would you rather win a Olympic medal in speed skating or an NBA championship? Olympic medal. <laughs> it's greater, man. Like, uh, it's, how should I say it? Like, you know, they label them as world champions and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong. It's that, but I mean, let's say you're not having a good day and your teammates are doing great things on the court. I mean, it just makes it more, I feel like it's more sweet when you put in the work day in and day out and it's all up to you to determine how you're going to skate or how that race is going to go, how you come in, how your preparation is, how, how your preparation is through the four years, through the days that aren't good, through the days that are good. Um, I just feel like it makes it more sweet when it's um, an individual thing. Yeah, well said. I had a feeling I knew the answer, but I was going to ask you anyway. Um, yeah. So I, if I remember correctly, based on the schedule, the the fall World Cup qualifier is pretty early in October. Um, yeah. You guys have uh, long track ice now? No, we get it tomorrow, actually. So. <laughs> tomorrow? Okay. But, um, yeah, so our, our first actual like full week of ice will be not this week coming up but the week after and then right after that we got desert classic yeah so a it's little so chance to do some year. racing yeah that's early yeah, it's so early but yeah i mean we don't get oval ice until the third week in september so i don't think i'm going to see you in salt lake because that's just a few weeks after and believe it or not yeah. i don't think i have a shot at a world cup team so my my <laughs> goals are all very different but that's all good um well, like I said, I I think, you know, when I look at your technique and when I look at the speeds that you're going now and your focus and drive, you know, I I have a strange feeling that there's going to be some uh there's going to be some real growth these next couple of years and, you know, you said you wanted to be amongst this. I think you're going to be amongst it really soon. So, I, I just it, wish man. you the best. Uh Thank keep your stomach good. <laughs> Yeah, and, man, uh, it's a big adjustment. Luckily, you know, like uh, I changed like everything, you know, my eating. Uh, I finally took it serious just, just because like, you know, uh, on inlines, I was a kid. I was young and I could eat whatever. I could eat 10 cheeseburgers. I'll be good to skate the next day, you know. And yeah. With this, with the day in and day out training and the schedule that we have, man, you have to make sure you're filling your body with the right stuff and not crappy stuff because you won't get that uh, return that you want, you know, from the yeah. body if you're not feeling it the proper way. Yeah, I, I think uh, you have to hit all aspects if you want to be world class, especially in a sport like speed skating. It's um, it's just unrelenting. You can't just go do whatever. Uh, it just exactly. takes so much coaching and drive and dedication and focus. And I don't know what I'm doing in the sport, but I think you're going to be great. Um, I, I really wish you a great season. I, I hope I see you out there in Salt Lake or maybe in Milwaukee at some point, but Sure. Keep doing what you're doing, and, uh, yeah, I, I think the sky's the limit for you, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. It's always good to hear.
All right, man, I'm going to play the outro and we're going to call this a wrap. And thank you so much for joining me today. Tanner, no Willie, thank you. and we are gone.